Hey, Desmond Du here from No Sleep Creative. Today we're going to make this simple text slide up animation. So, let's begin. In After Effects, let's hit Command N to create a new composition. And I'm going to rename this composition Demo. My settings will be Full HD, 24 frames per second, 100 frames long. Click OK. Let's hit Command T to use our text tool and type in Amazing Typography. And then let's position it somewhere in the center. And let's rename our text layer to T. Let's open up our text layer, go to Animate, Position, and then set our Y axis to be 400 pixel. Open up Range Selector, open up Advance, and we are going to put a keyframe down for Offset at negative 100. And then at about frame 30, make it 100. We are going to change the shape profile to Ramp Up. So when I play it, you can see there's a cascading effect. The reason why we're using offset is because of the shape profile ramped up. If I were to do things using the, the range selector, just start and end, this will, it will end up differently. Let me show you. So I'm going to duplicate that, that layer, change it to red so everyone can see clearly and I open up my range selector again. So instead of using a shape profile of ramp up, I'm going to set it square and then, oh, let's actually keep it a ramp up. If I were to set it to zero and then just animate the start, somewhere about frame 31 and reach completion. And then let's actually turn solo it. So you can see when it first began, it's already cascading. I want it to be just like, you know, the, the one in white over the, it should start like at a zero. Nothing should happen yet. So that's why we need to use offset because of this of uh, the shape profile so there's something to keep in mind let's delete this layer and proceed all right so we have this animation going on and maybe we could change the ease high to about 50 and then the ease low to be 100 and see what happens so it's a little bit faster let's press n to clip the uh the out point so we can see it we can also select our keyframes right click Key and then let's uh, ease in. And we can just push it back because it's kind of fast. Okay, let's rename this animator to pause Y. Let's duplicate this text animator and then let's rename it to pause underscore X. So we're going to move it, shift uh, each line in the X axis. So we're going to shift it by negative 100 pixel. Go to the range selector, open up advance and then change the, from base on characters to base on lines. So you can see it's like shifting to the right side as, as time proceeds. Press U to show our keyframes and let's move our second set of keyframes downwards. So we want it to be when amazing finish animating up and then we're gonna have it shift towards the right side. Let's play it. So it could be a little bit faster. Yes, something like that. The good thing about using text animator is that I can reposition my text without having my keyframes affected. And the next thing we want to do is to create a mat, a mass to just review it when it slides up. So let's go create new solid and this new, new solid name will be mat. Click OK. Turn off the visibility and then with our rectangle 2, let's create a mass and then let's stop at where the baseline of line 2 is, somewhere here. And we're going to set the track mat of our layer T text layer to alpha mat. When I play it, you can see it only reviews when it's within the, the active area of the mass. Now we need to stylize the motion of our text. So let's go to Effects and Preset Panel, and we're going to type in Posterize Time. And let's double click on it. And we're going to go around a range of 12 or 16. I'm going to go with a frame rate of 14. So, and let's play it. Nice. So the text animation is done. Now, let's create a background. Let's hit Command Y to create a new solid. And let's name this BG. And I'm going to go to Effects and Preset Panel, 
type in gradient ram we can change the color to something like a dark like a really saturated blue and our end color should be something black let's create a new solid again let's call this waves so this will be the abstract patterns at the back let's move our two solid layer to the bottom and then we are going to add in a fill to our white solid to our wave layer let's change it to something yellow yellow orange and we are going to use the effect venation blinds make sure you're selecting the second one because the first one is animation preset so using the venation blind i can increase the transition complete to create bands all these bands of line and i can set it at an angle so maybe about 60 degree and increase the width to about 200. next i'm going to type in wave warp in the effects and preset panel so I get to distort my bands of line. Let's option click on the direction of wave warp and pick with it to the direction of Venetian blind. So it will always be following the direction of my bands, the bands of line. So when I rotate it, you can see the rotation, the distortion is consistent. Let's increase the wave width of our wave warp to, let's see, it's 200, about 100. Let's increase the wave height and then let's also slow it down by changing wave speed to be 0.1 change the pinning to be all edges because let's undo that because we can see that uh, there this it doesn't look very pleasant you know where it uh, where it touches the edges so make sure pinning is set to all edges Next, we want to duplicate this layer and then we can change the color to something bluish and then we can increase the transition completion to have smaller lines and also increase the width. Sorry, let's actually reduce the width. Reduce the width to about, let's do a hundred width and then let's reduce Let's set the transition completion to be, I guess, 80 would be nice. And then let's put this at the back and change the blending mode to soft light. And then what we want to do is just to change the face of the wave warp so everything doesn't look so consistent. And maybe play with the wave width as well. Just spread it out about let's do 120 and now we want more current contrast between our background and our text layer so let's select text layer go to effects and preset panel and drop in a drop shadow effect and let's set the softness to be about 25 pixel and then about distance of 20. Last but not least, let's create a new adjustment layer and we're going to add in the effect noise. See, there's a lot of noise effect here. So noise and grain, noise. And let's set it to about 10. Let's just rename this adjustment layer to noise. And we are done. Thank you for watching this tutorial. If you like this video, please subscribe and like for more. You can also follow me on Instagram and Desmond Do to see my latest work. That's all I have for you guys. I'll see you next time.